What does the scouter say about his- Hi pal, nice to meet you. It's over 9,000! So one of my favorite proofs for a young Earth is the fact that we actually find helium inside of rock crystals. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for him. Now, helium actually slips out of the rocks over time. And so I suppose you've probably seen, you know, rock crystals that actually have air bubbles inside of them. And those air bubbles are actually helium. And over time, that helium will slip out. What Matt Powell is referring to here is a process called helium diffusion, in which, via process of radioactive decay, helium atoms make their way out of crystal lattices. Not air bubbles, atoms. You don't see these things. The bubbles he's referring to are usually water that's caught in the crystal development, not helium bubbles. And so this actually proves that the Earth cannot be billions of years old just due to the fact that the helium would have slipped out of those rocks by now. That's not how it works. That's not how any of this works. Now according to evolution, the Earth is 4.5 billion years old. Evolution doesn't tell us the age of the Earth. Matt Power is purposefully conflating different branches of science together in order to make them all seem more evil and vile and wrong. Evolution, so bad, so incorrect, let's call everything related to the age of the Earth evolution, because we're idiots. And so to say that helium has been sitting inside of rock crystals and has not slipped out by now, after 4.5 billion years, and it's supposedly the oldest crust of the Earth, the oldest rock, Folks, what a joke. <laughs> Shut up! Why Matt Powell is talking about helium in regards to these zircon crystals, I haven't the slightest. Zircon tends to be dated via uranium lead. That's the parent-daughter relationship you care about with these isotopes. And here's the thing too. If I was to go into a garage where we have an air compressor, and you know how the air compressor has to kick on to recharge every once in a while. The air cannot stay compressed in there over time. And so the more time that the air sits in the air compressor, the more it's going to have to recharge because the air will slip out. Well, same thing with rock crystals. It cannot be there from billions of years ago because that air would have just simply slipped right out of the rock and there wouldn't be any helium inside of these rock crystals. This is a fucking joke, right? Rocks are now air compressors? What is going on with this analogy? There is zero talk of geology. There is zero science. Of course, there's nothing in the description of the video to provide any links to what the fuck he's talking about. And he's saying the Earth isn't old because air compressors. What am I supposed to rebut here? This is just so fucking stupid. It's painful. The amount of subscribers this dude has, if this is the kind of content he puts out. Go back, pause the video, go back like 15 seconds, listen to him again. The Earth is young, the Earth is 6,000 years old because rocks are air compressors. What the fuck? That just makes no fucking sense. I mean, it's just bullshit. Fuck. Oh my, my, my. And so just as in a garage and an air compressor, you have air that slips out over time, helium slips out of rock over time. Nobody would ever say that the compressed air has been sitting in an air compressor for billions of years. And just in the same manner, nobody would ever say that helium inside of rock crystals has been sitting there for 4.5 billion years. He is going full in with this stupid fucking analogy. I'm not editing this stuff out. He's not talking about even the creationist geology points, which I'll get to at the end, by the way. He thinks a good rebuttal to radiometric dating, le uh, uranium lead dating, a good rebuttal to that is air compressors. This guy's got like 10,000 fucking subscribers, and his best response is air compressors. What the hell is wrong with you people? And that's what this channel is about, is making sure that you know what the facts are and what the truth is. <laughs> you 
serious? And so that when it comes time to deal with a skeptic or help try to reach somebody with the gospel, you can use the facts that you know and the truth that you know and the scripture that you've learned as well to reach the people of this world with the gospel. You heard it here first, folks. The two most powerful tools in the young earth creationist toolbox are his Bible and his air compressor. I couldn't make this shit up. I couldn't make this shit up if I tried. I'm sad that I lack the talent to make this shit up. Well, that was fun and all. Let's do some real quick geology. And as always, to remind you, if you want to learn more about these subjects, go to the sources. Linked below are plenty of papers, plenty of websites that dive deep into these topics. Don't expect me to teach everything to you. You should do it yourself. The entire helium and zircons conversation starts and ends with Humphrey's paper from 2004 called Helium Diffusion, Age of 6,000 Years, Supports Accelerated Nuclear Decay. In his paper, Humphreys disagrees with a 1982 paper on helium retention in zircon crystals, and as such, they pick what appear to be two samples from a bull hole in New Mexico to have measured for helium retention at a laboratory. Using this data, they then chart a uniformitarian model of 1.5 billion years against their creationist model of 6,000 years and cheer and pat themselves in the back that their model apparently does a lot better job at predicting diffusion rates of helium based on temperature. And since this creation model supposedly fits the data better than the uniformitarian model, therefore there is a big issue with all radiometric dating and we should not use it as an accurate way to measure the age of the Earth. Notice, I was able to summarize Matt Powell's entire argument referencing his data sources and I didn't say air compressor once. I know, I'm pretty good at this. I'm a pretty good creationist. Of course, there are lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of rebuttals and errors in Humphrey's work. They range from Humphrey's is bad at geology to Humphrey's is bad at math to Humphreys is bad at understanding the topic, to Humphreys is just bad at stuff. I'm not going to go in depth into all of these rebuttals. Linked below are plenty of articles on that, including, if you want a video to explain it to you, a Paulogia video that does an excellent job summarizing this. I'm going to break tradition from creationists, and instead of pretend like I'm an expert in all these things, I'm going to have you go look at actual experts. Again, Matt Powell wants you to believe that radiometric dating is false because air compressors. I'm going to believe that you are a bit smarter than that, and if you want to know these subjects, read up on them. Links in the description below. Please, if you want to have these conversations, learn something about what you're talking about. You're not really going to do a good job learning it from me, and you're really not going to learn this shit from Matt Powell. Apologia has a very good source on this. If you want to go deeper than Apologia goes, read the articles, read the papers, read the information below. Please, you're only going to be able to have these conversations accurately if you educate yourself. Do not educate yourself based on Matt Powell. He thinks rocks are air compressors. The man thinks rocks are air compressors.